Hi and welcome to Preview. My name is Guy Giampapa. Preview. 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 And I'm Don Tulip. Five, four, three, two, one, cue guy. Hello and welcome to Preview. My name is Guy Giampapa. I'm Don Tulip. And on our program today, a return visit from Tom Ellis. He's going to be here in a few minutes to discuss his career, his uh, induction into the Massachusetts Hall of Fame, a uh, broadcaster's Hall of Fame. But first, let's talk about movies and theater. So, Don, take it away. Okay, The Greatest Love Story Ever Told, starring Garden Gnomes, is the upcoming Gnomeo and Juliet, Shakespeare's revered tale. It's a comic off-the-wall makeover with songs by Elton John, the film features the voices of James McAvoy and Emily Blunt as Nomeo and Juliet, who have as many obstacles to overcome as their quasi <laughs> namesakes. Well, they are caught up in a feud between neighbors, but with plastic pink flamingos and thrilling lawnmower races in the mix, can this young couple find lasting happiness? Here's a look at Nomeo and Juliet. Red gnomes and blue gnomes have been enemies forever! Oh. On your mark! Get Come on, Nomeo! <laughs> Nomeo! Juliet, I just wanted to see you again. I'm gonna need you to cover if my dad asks. Just tell him I'm washing my hair. music of Elton John. Swim away. Be free. Thank you. Oh. If you seek adventure. <laughs> Stealth is my middle name. <laughs> oh, you look like a fun guy. If you believe in destiny. <laughs> Call me. Then get D to a 3D theater. Let's split up. And experience Shakespeare's legendary day. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Bravo! As you've never seen it before. This mission is going to require maximum stealth. Well, you won't get much stealthier than this. I can't go. I know how you feel. No, really. I'm stuck. The Speakeasy Stage Company's latest production is called Nine. Adapted from the film Eight and a Half, this is a musical version of the story taken from the life of Federico Fellini. Timothy John Smith plays Guido Contini, the frustrated film director who is searching for a subject for his next film. A bevy of 15 ladies surround him as they complicate his life. He has his devoted wife, Louisa, played by Amy Doherty. She sings the song, My Husband Makes Movies. Carla, Guidi's mistress, wants Guido for herself, and she makes no bones about it. The third woman in Guido's life is his mother. Young Eric March is one of the two youngsters alternating the role of Guido as a boy. He's shown here with Guido in the temptress Serafina, played by Carrie Dowling. And then there is Maureen Kyler, played, playing the French woman Liliane Lafleur. Her Follies Bergeres number, where the company tries to force Guido into selecting the theme for his next picture. Paul Daniel does a masterful job of directing his cast. Amid the arches on the set, he manages to place the ladies in the proper areas of the set, and they are on stage throughout the play. This is not a distraction, however. Tim Smith, who has graced many theater stages in Boston, is memorable and in fine voice. Amy Doherty, another Boston favorite, shines as the suffering wife. I like the cast of Nine. There are so many memorable 
and supporting performances. It's difficult to choose any one. Each and every actor is believable. Speakeasy continues to bring us first class entertainment. If you ask me to rate nine, I would have to say it's a 10. The Regal Music Theater of Greater Boston pays tribute to the legendary jazz greats in a special show Sunday, February 20th. John Mills, Elmer Hopper, and special guest Gina Eckstein will sing the greatest hits of their famous predecessors, the Mills Brothers and the incomparable Billy Eckstein, all in one memorable concert. They are backed by popular demand for this one show at the Robinson Theater in Waltham. John Mills, who performed with his father Donald Mills, the last surviving brother of the original Mills Brothers, and Hopper, lead singer for the Platters for 21 years, recreate the unmistakable harmonies and the swinging sound of the celebrated quartet. You'll hear the perennial favorites, Tiger Rag, Cab Driver, Glowworm, and Lazy River, along with Paper Doll and many more. Rising star Gina Eckstein opens the concert with selections from her newly released CD. And from her father's greatest hits, she'll sing the classic Prisoner of Love, Misty, and nice work if you can get it. This one-time concert at the Robinson Theater in Waltham is not to be missed. The date is February 20th at 2 o'clock. For its mid-season production, the Walpole Footlight has selected Neil Simon's comic farce called Rumors. Four couples have been invited to the home of New York's Deputy Mayor Charlie and his wife Myra to celebrate their 10th wedding anniversary. These guests are not ordinary people. They are a bit screwy and have problems trying to solve the situation at hand. They arrive one couple at a time to discover Charlie has been shot, his wife is nowhere to be seen, and the cook and butler are gone, and no food has been prepared. While the question of how Charlie was accidentally shot in the air is never resolved, it doesn't seem to matter as each guest is more concerned with being involved in a scandal. The plot may be slight, but what matters here is the performance of each guest. It all comes to a climax when the police arrive, not to investigate the shooting, but to question the guests about a car accident. The couples are Chris and Ken, played by Colleen Lavery and Frederick Fairbanks. The second couple, Claire and Lena, portrayed by Cynthia Small and David Giagrando. The third couple is Ernie and Cookie, played by James Merlin and Barbara Shapiro. And the fourth couple, Glenn and Cassie, played by Michael Dornish and Jess Maxfield. I suspect Neil Simon had tongue-in-cheek when he named his men Ken, Len, and Glenn. He also gave his women's first names that began with the letter C. Uh, one would suspect Simon was having fun while writing this play. I would say the highlight of the play is in the second act when Len concocts a ridiculous story on the spur of the moment to account for the strange goings on in the house. He does a pretty good job of it. The whole idea of rumors is not to be taken seriously but to enjoy time in the theater. And this is what the footlighters are doing. Rumors is screwy, wacky, and a lot of fun. And now, happy viewers, I would like to introduce our guest, who is now in the Massachusetts Broadcasters Hall of Fame. His name is Tom Ellis, and I say welcome, Tom, once again. Thanks to you, I'm in the Hall of Fame. Oh. You and Don, thank you very much. And nice. a lot of other people. <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, boy. Well, that well, was so deservedly. I uh, mean, you really deserve that. Thank you. You know, Arthur Katz, yes. he, he's head of that committee, and he was the, the first one to... He said, this is a man of quality. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I fooled him pretty good. Huh? <laughs> well, anyway, thank you very much for inviting me back here. After I spieled on and on and on the first time, I thought, man, I'll, I'll oh, never no. have another invitation anywhere. No, no, that's what brought you back, <laughs> because but, you spieled on and on. <laughs> well, I did have a, a very pleasant visit with you the first time, and uh, I was so happy that you have invited me back. Thank you. Well, thank you're more than on. welcome. Yeah. So what did you think of the luncheon? Uh, I was uh, had a great time, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, there was a huge crowd there. How yeah. many? Two hundred? It must have well, been well over two hundred. Over two hundred. In fact, uh, it's uh, more people than the year before. Yeah. They had to get a larger room. And I think they're getting even larger next I think year, so. aren't they? Yeah. 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 Ah, it was wonderful. Dolly, your house. <laughs> 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 and uh, and the uh, the inductees all had uh, a great. Uh, a, a great time, and I enjoyed hearing them speak about their experiences, and wasn't that fun? And the old fellow who was a hundred and how many? hundred and two, I think. Uh, who, who was responsible for getting Channel 4 on w. the W.C. Swartley? Yeah. Yes, yeah, imagine was that. Was there. I, yeah. I had the pleasure and the honor of sitting at mm. Bill Swartley's table, and oh. I worked for that outfit for seven years. I was just amazed, and I had a great little story to tell 
that I heard from Arch McDonald uh, oh, tell us before he passed. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was the one uh, about him signing on Channel 4. Oh, yes, yes. Um, yeah. you, you want me to tell it? Yes, please yeah, do. Please well, do. Yeah. Uh, this was in June of 1948, mm -hmm. and Channel 4 and the company that owned Channel 7, which was uh, General Tire. Oh, uh, Westinghouse. Mother, yeah. Westinghouse owned four. four. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, and, and, and General and seven Tire was owned General by General Tire hadn't bought it as yet. No, yeah, I'm sorry. Went on the air. I gave him the wrong answer. Yeah, yeah. You, you said Channel 7? Yeah. Yeah, that General Tire was correct. Uh, th those two companies, yeah. Westinghouse and General Tire, were in a race to see. Mm who could be the first right. to get a television station mm -hmm. on the air. And Channel 4, Westinghouse won. Yeah. And this afternoon, uh, they were still building the studio, carpenters mm. with saws going and hammers and all of that stuff. And uh, just before 6 o'clock, Arch McDonald, remember Arch? Oh, yes. Of course. Great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, such a splendid gentleman. Mm. I had the pleasure of working with him when I first came to Boston. Um, Arch went out into the where the carpenters were working and said, "Gentlemen, uh, excuse me, but would you calm down for just a few minutes? I've got to sign a television station on the air." Oh. So he borrowed two saw horses from them and a sheet of plywood, and that was his desk. And a, and he borrowed a keg of nails, and that was his seat. And at six o'clock. Arch McDonald signed on Channel 4. Wonderful. Uh, sitting, uh -huh. sitting behind a, uh, a plywood desk on a, on a keg of nails. <laughs> uh, that, I thought that was such a great story. And the fella, uh, Bill Schwartley, who was his boss, mm -hmm. who ran Westinghouse in Boston, was the guy who uh, was instigating, he was the instigator mm -hmm. of the whole thing of putting Channel 4 on the air. And That's there right. I was, sitting sitting Imagine. at his table. Wow. I was in awe, oh. but it was a lot of fun. It really was. A lot of pros that you worked with through the years were oh there. My God. You know, uh, Don, oh, I'm, too many I'm, names I'm glad you brought that up. I, I, I brought a list of some people. I sat down for, at my computer for like five minutes <laughs> last night and came up with 44 names of people. Wow. And as I said in my acceptance speech, I I think that uh, besides you guys, uh, if it hadn't been for you guys, I never would have gotten in. <laughs> in no, I think your name did. <laughs> but but uh, other than you guys, uh, I think the thing that got me into the Hall of Fame was the fact that I was always surrounded by stars. Uh, mm -hmm. The people I worked with are who's who. The list is, oh, yeah. uh, well, let's see, on, in Channel 4, Shelby Scott, yeah. there, uh, uh, Peter Mahegan, Arch Clark McDonald, Booth. Yeah. Uh, Don Kent, mm. Rex Trailer, uh, Shelby Scott, uh, uh, the, let's see, Sharon King, mm. uh, and it goes on and on and on. I, ca I, ca I can just keep spouting names for you until sundown. And then um, I went from there over to, well, I went to New York, but I came back uh, three years later and went to five, and there was Natalie and Chad yeah. and Don Gillis. And uh, some other great people. On and on it goes. On and on it goes. Yep. And then I went to seven. Yeah. And there was uh, uh, some other some other fine people, uh, Gary Armstrong. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I, it just it's amazing. Uh, and the thing that was that dawned on me as I was making this list was forty four names over how many years? Sixteen years that I that I had the pleasure and the honor to. To be able to work with, um, and in the in the five years that I was cha at Channel Seven, there were forty-two people who came through the gates. You know, it was like the door opens, door closes, yeah. door opens, door closes. And they were all managers. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another thing yeah. uh, that uh, I've noticed in uh, particularly with NECN now, the New England mm. Cable News. They brought in a new ownership and, yeah. and a new management. And uh, they've pink slipped a lot of the long-time yes, employees. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But that's that's a natural thing that happens when new management comes right. in. I yeah. don't know if it's ever happened to you, but it, it has. Oh, oh yes. Oh yes. I've gone to work at a place yeah. uh, hired by one manager, and next thing you know, ten months later, another manager mm. comes in and wants to bring his own his people, people in. Yeah. It, it's it's in not just in broadcasting. You'll notice that any time. Any company changes managers. They pink slip a whole bunch of people. 
Yeah. You see in the paper every day, 800 getting laid off, 1,000 exactly. getting laid off. Yeah. So it's just a, it's a, it's a fact of life. It's a given that when you get new management and new ownership, you're going to get new people, 